Welcome to Catalyst MLM. I'm Brian Switchko, and today on the show we have Amy Schmittauer. Amy went to school for poli sci and thought she wanted to go into campaign fundraising, but she started in the online world as a freelance community manager for small businesses and quickly grew into much more. She's a video content creator working with brands, developing interesting, uh, interesting information and hilarious information, uh, vlogs, and helping them to connect with their audience. She is a contributor for sec- uh, Savvy Sexy Social, uh, Lifehack, Tech Cocktail, Metropreneur, Aspire Magazine, and many more. Thanks so much for being on. No, did we already lose you? We already lost you. Oh, there you go. Are we back? Yeah. Yeah. I lost <laughs> you right, right in that moment. Right when I said hi, I was like, what happens next? Okay. Um, do you just want me to pick it up from there? <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep going. We're all human. It happens. Internet, okay. internet speeds happen. Uh, but yeah, so tell me, tell me more about how you got started. Uh, yeah, so I actually started Savvy Sexy Social because I wanted to get into the industry and I was trying to find my outlet. Um, and so that was just how it got started. I was trying to figure out how I could stand out from everybody else. There's so many people uh, at the time in the social media marketing space that you know I wanted to hang with, but I really had to prove to people that I knew what I was talking about. So the best way for me to do that was to make edited video content because I'm really good at that. And if I wanted people to pay attention to what I was saying, I had to do it in a way that was really going to grab their attention. So that's how the blog started. And it really was my number one client driver for a long time. I was freelancing and just trying to figure out the type of clients I wanted to work with, the type of stuff I wanted to work on. And uh, that helped me launch my company, Vlog Boss Studios, in November of 2012. Uh, because I knew I wanted to focus very much with small businesses and entrepreneurs on their video content marketing with social media, obviously complementing that as well. That's awesome. And what was your original goal getting into it? Was it legitimately just to hang out with cool people? It was legitimately to be able to work from home and stay with my dog. Yeah. (laughs) It's all about the dog. Yeah. I mean, I think there's like something so sexy about being your own boss. And I was like, that sounds really cool. And that was like sort of the beginning of like me hearing the word entrepreneur so much and it wasn't like this dirty word anymore and it was like yeah that does sound really cool to be the person that decides what my revenue streams are and whether or not I get a paycheck and I work really hard anyway why don't I take most of the money for myself so that was sort of um, the driver behind it I really had no idea I even liked marketing until a friend pointed out that I was really good at it and I was like I don't know what you're talking about that's like an ugly word I don't like the word marketing <laughs> and so I learned that I was very good at it I was just sort of dabbling um, as I was working with uh, in in the in politics and lobbying yeah. and stuff I was sort of trying to figure out if this thing called passion was a real thing and if I should really take a chance on it because I had a wonderful job and a great opportunity so I figured it out and then I left and here I am. Yeah, that's awesome. And what, when you, I mean, when you got started, you were creating content for yourself to promote yourself before you were doing work with clients. So what was the context of that content? Um, I, I think a lot of it was I wanted to reach out to people that needed my help and just understand what their pain points were because I knew that was going to be the beginning of me coming up with a good content strategy because if these people have questions about it, a lot of people have questions about it. And sure, there's a lot of people online talking about it, but I can always start with my own network and grow out. And I think, you know, something you're probably really familiar with. I I think a lot of people are so concerned when they first start out as a personal brand or as a small business that they don't have anybody to tell or market to. And they're just like, what's the secret for social media and Google ads so that I can get my name out there? Well, the secret is that like, unless you've been like, hiding in your basement for like 50 years, you probably have friends and family who may or may not know somebody who knows somebody that needs your help. So why don't you talk to them, let them know what you're doing and kind of start that organic spread of your work. And that's what I really try to focus on with my clients. Ads are definitely a thing that are appropriate for here and there for certain campaigns, but to be dependent on them is out of control and just not fair for you. So organic growth is really what I focus on with my customers. Yeah. And that's, that's hugely important. I love, I mean, organic, it's an amazing thing. Cause not only when you put the effort into it, but then when you see it come back and you're like, I, I didn't really do that. Like that was from something that yeah. I did ages ago. So a yeah. lot of people, I think entrepreneurs in, in any space, they get hung up on, you know, they don't know 
exactly what to do. You know, maybe they know where their direction is, but they don't know what to do to get there. And so they kind of like get in that analysis paralysis and they're like, well, I don't know what my video series is going to be. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. But you oh, right. you jumped in and asked what people wanted before you even knew that you were capable of creating it. Right. And so right. I mean, my initial thought process was I didn't want to recreate the wheel at all. So I was yeah. doing videos about what other people were talking about. And I was saying, <laughs> oh, copy blogger wrote this article today and so and so wrote this article today. And here's what my two cents on it. That was how I started it, because I, in addition to having those questions, I also was thinking, OK, well, I need to have a few more things in the kitty here. You know, I'm not yeah. I'm not getting questions left and right. You know, nobody knew who I was yet. But that's both of those things were a really good opportunity for me. You've seen uh, on YouTube, you've seen the response videos do really, really well for some people. So right. being able to recreate that in some way really helped. Yeah. And I saw, I think recently, and uh, unfortunately before the interview, because it's me stuck in my head all day long, um, is your review of, uh, review, air quotes, um, of Gary Vaynerchuk's book. And it was yeah. hilarious. I was laughing hysterically um, because it was, it was a song. It was a, the Christmas Carol because it came out around Christmas and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people think that they have to have they have to have that original thought. But really, when someone has content, news, whatever it may be, they have that conversation and they're like, oh, have you seen this thing? It's really cool. That yeah. conversation is organic and unique. And that's it seems like a lot of what you do. You have conversations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I, I hate that video for only one reason. I don't hate it. I actually, I actually kind of love that video. It's great. But I don't want people to think that my strategy in making that video was for it to go viral. That's absolutely yep. never a strategy that I have. I think you have to make good content. And if it's really good and it goes viral, then happy day. Yep. But there are consequences that come with viral videos too. For me, yeah. it was all about um, I know Gary personally, you know, we're getting to know each other. I want him to know me better. And I know I promised to buy his book and I told him I was going to review it. And I was like, well, I could just review it just like everybody else. Yep. And there's probably not very many video reviews of it, but what could I do to kind of step it up? And that song's just always been a favorite of mine for the holiday season. So all of a sudden, like I can come up with I could probably make six songs out of just that tune. Like, I mean, it's so fun to just like fill in the blank in your head. I was just driving home and I, all of a sudden I had half a Gary Vaynerchuk song in my head and <laughs> I came home and wrote it down. Literally that video came out in like less than 24 hours. That's amazing. And did you insane. sing it or did you outsource the singing? I, I sang it. Okay. That's awesome. And I, I it's funny because you, you said, you know, what can I do to step it up? Right. What can I do to be different? Yeah. And um, I think I forgot to take it off the couch. I usually remove it, but um, there's a, a wiener dog shaped pillow behind me on the couch um and i used to have a wiener dog and i was like well i want to take videos of him because he's adorable i'm gonna take a lot of videos i don't have room on my hard drive i'll put them on youtube everyone yeah. does that what can i do to step it up and he had like to date he has like 4500 subscribers and like 2 million views and, and people it's it's a really interesting like community around a dog but it was solely from the reason i had no idea how to do it i did most of it on accident but it's that same thought process of what can i do to step it up and i think that that's a big thing for people so what what did you do in that process? Like you asked yourself the question, but did you kind of evaluate what other people are doing or did you just say, let's think creatively and figure it out from there? I think I have the luxury of not having very many people in my industry making great videos. So let me just put that out there. <laughs> Um, I, I hate to be like the hater that way, but there's just a lot of people in the marketing space that get on YouTube and they just kind of sound like talking heads and they're, yeah. they're not really following the cadence of YouTube. And that was really why that video was going to work. I don't care if somebody's done something similar or not. I mean, hopefully not that similar. <laughs> so I don't want it to come off that way, but the the idea is I have a YouTube audience. I'm going to tailor my content for them yeah. and whoever else wants to come along for the ride is welcome to. But I'm not going to work on that platform unless I respect why people are there. I have a lot of people that watch yeah. my videos that don't have a brand, don't have a business, don't do anything. They just like to yeah. watch my videos because they're quick and they keep their attention. It's entertaining enough that they may have learned something, whether they're going to use yeah. it or not. So I think that that's what's really important. A lot of people struggle with that. They struggle yeah. with this cadence of YouTube and how they can actually fit in versus just bl try to make a fool out of themselves and hope yeah. that it sticks. Yeah. And I think that, that cadence, and I love the word because I used to be a biker, but um, mm -hmm. bicycle and cadence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> for, those of, for those of you that got that joke. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a different cadence and a different kind of language for every single social network. And respecting that is huge. But uh, the other thing, too, which you do really well is injecting personality. 
Um, you know, and, and you, res- you know, how you tell the story, I think is like the cadence, but what the story is, is about you and, uh, multi-level marketing, other businesses, regardless, it's the people who inject that personality the most are the ones that kind of stand out. Um, so when you got started, were you at all kind of fearful of, you know, I don't know what people are going to think, or did you just say, screw it and I'm going to do it? Um, <laughs> I think, I think I knew that I was going to be kind of obnoxious from the beginning because that was <laughs> going to be the only way that it was really going to work out because, I think everyone's just mostly afraid of how their first video is going to turn out. I don't know if they, it is about what people care about, but most importantly, it's like how you feel about it because you have to watch your own stuff over again. Should that occur? I mean, I watch my stuff over again all the time. People ask me to speak and they're like, can we just watch your videos? I'm like, easiest speaking job ever. (laughs) Yeah, we can watch my videos. Um, But like the first ones are always what get people hung up is because they're like, oh, I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I can't I can't publish this. I have to delete it. And then you don't ever grow from there. So my first videos kind of were not amazing. I didn't really care what people thought of them. I more cared about me doing them, getting getting the process started so that I could grow from there so that I eventually would have videos that I love, even though they're still just as bonkers. Sometimes people have respect for that because they're like, oh, she's kind of got a good thing going here. People are following it. So it must be cool. (laughs) (laughs) And how, how does it feel like looking at where you are now and the quality of your videos and how far they reach and looking back to your first video? both in terms of quality and content and how many people saw it? Well, the, the quality was crap. I mean, <laughs> I, I was, I was, I started with my flip cam, yep. which I always hated and anyway. Look. It worked for this. They were cool, but they situation. sucked. Right. They were so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, why did Cisco discontinue them? Best idea yep. ever like <laughs> to discontinue them. Um, the reason why I didn't like the the flip was because I was so excited to take them out and about with me and it didn't have a yeah. wide angle lens. So it was like you had to have like go go gadget arm <laughs> if you wanted like a good <laughs> if you wanted a good view because otherwise you only saw like from the chin up. And it worked in this situation for the series, however, because I could kind of like set it on my desk and sort of yeah. back up from it and like adjust from there. But you couldn't see yourself like it was just hit or miss how it yeah. was going to actually turn out. Um, I moved up from there. I always used like a Canon PowerShot and I, I liked that for a long time and I eventually got one that had a screen. So the quality went up until last summer. I finally like had Austin Evans of the Austin Evans YouTube channel talk to me about DSLRs on camera yep. and he convinced me to get one. So the quality has come far. Yeah. <laughs> it's come very, very, very far. Um, my personality is probably about the same. My comedy has just probably gotten a little bit better timed. Well, and, and my editing has gotten a lot better yeah. too. And it's that practice too. And and I mean, yeah. it's it's funny. And I I've always used this as an, ex- as an example because when I was in college, um, Philip DeFranco was getting popular. And uh, I always, when people are, I'm like, I give him as an example of like, look at, you know, now, right? And he has, I think he's like a studio and I think he shoots with a DSLR. And I'm like, go look at his first video. And it was like greasy kid, like, you know, white yeah. t-shirt in a bedroom, dark, no light whatsoever. And coincidentally, he had a poster of a monkey um, in the background and a monkey with headphones on. Um, I didn't find this out till years later, but that was actually created by a friend of mine. And he, he didn't no know way. it was just completely accidental. And because of that, he's now in like um, Bed Bath & Beyond, Walmart. That poster sold all over the world. And I, I was like, dude, do you know about this? He's like, I had no idea. And so he didn't know for years. He just thought it was really popular. He had no idea why. But, you know, you, I mean, two different stories. But you look back and yeah, people think they have to be perfect from the get-go. But they kind of forget that the people that they idolize now used to be <laughs> what they're going to be when they record their first video. Totally. I can't believe they wouldn't have communicated that to the guy that created the poster. Well, I think he just bought it at the store. Um, He had no idea. Oh, oh my God. That's so... Is is it the same one that he still uses? Uh, He has like a different version of it that he uses in his intro. And I honestly don't think that they know each other, but it is. It's really crazy. There's I'll have to tell you the full story later. Um, But yeah, I mean, have you worked with people to teach them how to do what you do kind of on a, a coaching basis? Yeah, I mean, Vlogboss Studios is a lot of that. So you can, you know, work with me on creating your own series. Um, we also are able to pick up the process from any yeah. point where you can't. Um, a lot of people don't have any personality and they would really like to have a great series. Yeah. They wouldn't mind somebody else's face being on it because, you know yeah. what, if somebody's really good and they can talk about that particular industry yeah. and they can follow the content plan, then we can kind of make that 
content transaction happen. And it's really yeah. great because there's so many great people on YouTube who just wish they could be the next Philip DeFranco, I just yeah. mean Grace Helbig, Jenna Marbles, yeah. but that ship has kind of sailed in terms of really, really growing a huge presence like that. It's, it's yeah. gonna be really tough for someone these days. Yeah. So if you really want to just make video for a living, there are other ways to do that. And it could be this, like this way. If I have a health and beauty client, then I could get a health and beauty blogger that's been making videos yep. forever, knows how to cut, knows how to talk about it. And we can make that content happen. Yeah. Um, that said, I also work with clients on not only developing that strategy, but if they're like, oh, I'd love to talk on camera, then great. We'll, we'll edit all your content, yeah. optimize and get it ready for publish. We can handle any part of the process. On Savvy Sexy Social, I also offer like a micro consulting program just mm -hmm. because that, that audience truly is small businesses, yep. entrepreneurs, people that might even just have an idea and don't know what to do with it. So they don't yep. quite have the marketing budget that would make sense for Vlogboss Studios client. So they can buy 90 minutes of my time and we'll create a social action yep. plan for them. So yeah, I, I definitely do help with that. I've also had, you know, smaller products on, on the website, like yep. um, the Pro Vlogger Series boot camp. So that was yeah. really cool because a lot of people just a lot of people want me to do a video about how I edit my videos and I just like don't want to because I feel like that's like actually extremely valuable. So yeah. that was something I decided to put in the Pro Vlogger Series Bootcamp. Yeah. I showed them in, in every single video from beginning to end how I made my series and yeah. even how I edit my videos. And that was really something that did very well because people just wanted that perspective to see what they should be doing if they're getting started. Yeah. And I think what you do with um, Vlogboss Studios and, and I mean everything, it's it, it's telling of two different things. It's telling of when people get started that they they can do kind of whatever they want, even if they don't know what they want. There are people out there that will help them. And there are also people out there that if they're like, well, I just don't want to get on camera, they can still build a presence of some kind using That's video. Right. Like every it, And I think people don't see this, is that they don't see that stuff can be taken off their plate and, and these partnerships can be formed or you can purchase the services or whatever it may be. Um, so the question is, how, how did you learn about those partnerships? I have the luxury of being in two different spaces. I'm able to give the cadence of YouTube because I'm very much in the YouTube space and I market and I network with other marketers and, and, and businesses. So by being able to be in both of these communities, like I might go to New Media Expo. I didn't go this year. I might go to Consumer You would have met me there. Show. I know. There's so <laughs> many people that I'm like meeting now that like I don't, they're getting introduced to me somehow, but I didn't go to the conference. Like it's really kind of funny. You'll come but, next year. Um, I was there. I I was there for a consumer electronics show. I've yep. been to New Media Expo quite a few times, so it was sort of just a situation of I'm, I, I don't really know if I need to go to it anymore, but yeah. it's definitely a good place to go if you haven't been to any blogging conferences. They cover a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Um, but I also go to like things like VidCon or Playlist yeah. Live, and those are very like fangirl YouTube-based conferences and you know maybe I'm not there to be a fangirl anymore because I've kind of grown out of that I mean I didn't think I would ever grow out of that but I've kind of grown out do of do you that. have any tattoos of YouTubers names no or? I okay. don't no I don't <laughs> but it, it is a good opportunity to collaborate with people especially when there's so many of us in one place at the same time so that's really a strategy for me to be able to get people on my channel possibly get on other people's channels yeah. and start to grow a little bit more organically as well so by being in both of those spaces and meeting creators you know somebody I I met at VidCon this year is now my lead editor and he's been great. Yeah. He's been helping me so much with client videos, just pumping those out. You know, I just emailed him last night and I was just like, oh, by the way, we have like a massive project due next Monday and the rest of the footage will be in on Thursday. Can you start? Can you start? And he's like, sure. And it's like, yes. <laughs> You know, having those opportunities to network with them and, yeah. and even like maybe there's going to be a personality project I can put him on too. Right. That's where I meet those people. And then, of course, I meet with brands and marketers all the time about their needs for this. So, yeah. And that's awesome. And it, it's fascinating too, because um, you've been able to build both a YouTube presence and a, a very successful, actually, several very successful businesses. But when you look back and if someone's like, oh, you know, you know, she's really awesome and I can't do that. And the reality is, is that you had no idea what you were doing when you got started. But you just said, I'm going to do it. And you figured yeah. it out. That's, I mean, it's, it's that, what is the thing that paral paralyzed whatever people talk about? The analysis, <laughs> pra analysis, Thank paralysis. You. Analysis, yeah. paralysis, everybody's, that's exactly what I run into all the time. And <laughs> I think I just know, I, like, I, I'll give you an example. I'm <laughs> planning something right now for the Savvy Sexy Social audience. It's, I'm very excited about 
but it's really important to me. So I'm putting a deadline on it so yep. that I don't put it off anymore because I know I could rethink the name or rethink the logo or rethink this, rethink that, rethink yeah. how I'm doing it, rethink the format over and over and over. Yeah. But if I put a deadline on it, I know that I'm going to get started and it's only going to yeah. get better from there. And that's what I always tell everybody in any presentation I ever do. It always it always yeah. gets better. It will get better. It always, always, always gets better. You yeah. learn from things, whether it was a mistake or not. If it's just a small tweak here and there, that makes it really, really good. Yeah. I, um, I, I just think that people wait too long to execute. And I'm, yeah. I'm just not in the habit of doing that. Yeah. And I think that um, someone once told me recently is perfectionism is a form of procrastination. It's one of the biggest forms of procrastination. Mm -hmm. And they do. They get the people get locked and, and it's that fear. So did you have any of that yourself when you first got started? Of course, yeah. I think you do. I mean, I knew that I was already kind of setting a precedence mm -hmm. with what I was going to do. So I wanted it to be amazing. And the really the. Oh. Wow. always follow that no oh, you have to back up for a second because we That's dropped okay. out and now we're back um you said uh, setting a precedence cool. and yeah yeah so I knew I was setting I knew I was setting a precedence and I probably really did want it to be perfect but there's also this saying that I really like Theodore Roosevelt said do what you can with what you have where you are yeah. and I feel like that's really important I always say that he would have been the best vlogger ever because <laughs> the, thing, yes. the thing about it is really like I could I can only control so much. If I wasn't going to have the best camera or the best editing or the best yeah. lighting or any of that, then I was going to have the best personality. Yeah. And so I executed that as much as I possibly could and everything else just got better. So yeah, yeah you're going to want to be a perfectionist, but it's so much more fun to be a perfectionist when you can go back and look at how far you've come. Yeah. And that's definitely true. I think um there's a few things like that, a few like, you know, motivational quotes where it's like, you know, you know, you're crawling, you're taking one step forward. And it's like, well, look back and, and see how far. And it's really even if you've taken a few steps, they're big steps to you. And it, it means a lot. Um, and you I mean, kind of on that same note, uh, I think you listed on your website uh, the characteristics for working with you, which I kind of got a, I got a smile out of. So do you know those by heart? No. OK, it was. Uh, where, did, where did you read them? I forget. It's a, it, in all honesty, my, my assistant found it for me. Um, but so uh, to be passionate about uh, what you're doing and show that you want to play a role in the growth of your business. Exactly. Yes. I should have said that. <laughs> and, and so and so some people, you know, they they're in it for other reasons. Um, so, you know, speak a little bit about what it means for you to connect with those passionate people. I, I think the key thing for me was I was um, during my process of freelancing before I decided to launch the business. The one thing that really stood out to me about people I didn't want to work with was the people that were like, hey, just handle this, will you? Yeah. And that's not I'm not interested in that because you need to be a part of the process. This is yep. your brand. I don't know your brand as well as you know your brand. I'm going to try like hell to understand it, yep. but I can't do it for you. If we want to hire people to help you, that's fine, but we yeah. need to treat them like they're a part of the organization so they yep. can feel, eat, breathe, just like you do what you're doing. Yeah. I think everybody's so worried about the product being perfect. If the product's great, then everything else will be great. Your product needs to be freaking great. Yeah. But the reality is you also need to market yourself. And that's why Savvy Sexy Social's byline is the marketing lifestyle blog. Because don't come to me unless you're willing to understand that everything you do when you wake up in the morning, yeah. who you talk to, how you send emails, how you dress, how you yeah. respond to potential clients, how you respond to people who may or may not be interested in you. It's all yeah. a part of living a marketing lifestyle. Every single day, you're marketing yeah. your business with everything you do. That's awesome. And and it's true because when you, especially when you do videos, especially when you do anything video blog related, I mean, you shouldn't be reading a script because like it's really dry really fast. You can have a framework, but very easily, I mean, like I legitimately forgot to take that um, pillow off of my couch, um, mm -hmm. you know, and so uh, the people who are watching, um, I don't I don't think I've ever really mentioned before that I have a famous dog, um, arguably much more famous than the business uh, <laughs> <laughs> for now. Um and uh, well, he has raving fans, but maybe you could be a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sponsored by Apple the Doxy. Um, <laughs> but so, that you know, where was I going with that? It was productive. Um, yeah. I mean, so but having those people who are really passionate and, you know, that that stuff ekes out. Um, but if you're not passionate, it's really dry. And it's like, you should buy my product. It is the coolest thing ever. Uh, right. So how how do you filter that? How do you see people like that? I mean, the, the, how you explained it before, passing it telling, off. Is... I love p telling people no. <laughs> I, I th that's really the reality. Um, you come to me and I, I can, I can tell 
and I know this because I've taken clients that I knew I had an instinct about and, and yeah. I still took them and I regretted it. Yeah. I can tell with somebody in the first half an hour if we're going to work out together. Yeah. And um, I've been pretty spot on about that because everybody that I was wary about that I may have taken on because of who recommended them come to me or something yeah. of that nature, it did not work out. And yeah. I think the best possible thing you can do for your business is learn to say no. And I know that no one ever says that. I just yeah. talked to a new business owner the other day and I just said, just make sure... Like, I, you know, I asked her what her business plan was and she's like, I don't really have one yet. And I'm like, yes, you do. You're a copywriter and yeah. you charge for it. That's your business plan. Like you don't have to yeah. like have this ex ex extreme un like explanation of what you're doing. You have to say what you're doing. Otherwise people don't know what the heck to recommend you for. Yeah. And so I, I think that's just so important to understand if you don't niche down yeah. And she's like, I don't want to niche down. I think I'm going to stay pretty like wide. I'm like, okay, great. You're not going to get any jobs because yep. no one's going to immediately start thinking about how you can apply to their life. Yep. Oh, I know somebody that needs a copywriter for tech, uh, you know, wearable tech, you know, like right. having that variable added all of a sudden someone might be thinking like, oh, even the people that start thinking they understand and they're like, oh, I know somebody that's a baker that could really use your help. And they're right. like. No, not at all. But I'll talk to him. I mean, you yeah. need to make that decision. You do. Yeah. I, I mean, I had a client recommended to me that it was a company leaving town and they said, hey, I think you'd be perfect to work, do social media management for them. And I'm like, oh, really? You must not follow anything I do because I don't do social media management. <laughs> yep. But okay, why didn't you recommend so-and-so who's the best social media manager for restaurants in yeah. the city? I don't think she's a good fit. Okay, fine. So I'll take the meeting and yeah. I will tell them who the best person in the city is for them to hire. And yep. if they want to talk to me about how they can grow organically with video content, let's go. Yep. Guess what they did? Their budget got bigger. They hired us both. That's awesome. It's the best thing you can do yeah. is be that connector. And I think too many people, and, and I'll you know parlay that into to multi-level marketing, is that too many people, especially when recruiting new distributors or just thinking of partnering with anyone, they, you know, oh, every, every you know, it, you know, here's the, the test to see if they're a great, you know, prospect for your business. You know, put a mirror in front of them. And if they fog it up, then they're perfect. And the reality is, is the the faster someone can say no and like, no, you're not willing to work for it. No, you don't match my team. No, you're not a good fit for this company. No, not not now. You need to go read a book. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever it may be, you are able to connect with the right people. But I love what you said about you took the meeting anyway. Um, and then they, you know, you wanted to help them and you went in saying, I'm going to find out what the deal is because this person didn't really explain it. Um right. And then something developed from that. But you didn't you had no idea that that would happen when you went in. It, it very no. well could have been nothing. It was a it was a prominent business owner in town. Yeah. So I, I, undoubtedly, I want to know who this guy is. Thanks yeah. for the intro. I'm not going to do that work for him. And that's yep. definitely not the right budget for that work, by the way. But that's that was what I went in there with. Yeah. I know I, I have nothing to lose in this situation. I have only something to gain because yeah. I'm going to tell him like, hey, bud, I'm not your best fit. I appreciate him sending me your way, yeah. though. I'm not wasting your time. I'm here to let you know of a couple things you probably haven't thought about. Yep. And I'm here to let you know who you don't know about. So-and-so, you need to hire her, period. Yep. You will be very happy. And that's exactly where we are today. They are, they've been a client now with me and her for six months. That's awesome. And I think yeah. with, especially with um, a lot of really successful MLMers, they – they reach out to other industries and they say, well, I'm, you know, I'm really good at recruiting and sales and building a community or whatever it may be. And they reach out to someone who does, you know, flower sales or fashion, whatever it may be. And they go, oh, you know, well, well, I do this. I don't know. Maybe that would work for your industry. Even on a base level like that, those are the people that network and build businesses far beyond what they started as. That's right. So, so kind of tying back to video on that same note is, is in multi-level marketing, people have the same product and the same business opportunity within the same group. So, what would you recommend to someone like that who has kind of the same thing and how can they differentiate themselves with video if they're all selling the same product or business opportunity? I think it goes back to the niche situation. I mean, if you all have the same product, you yourself might have specialties in other areas where you might know a specific industry a little bit better than your teammates and be able to say, like, I'm really going to go hard after this group. I'm not going to reject anyone. But you know what? If I really focus on this group of people and say why this product would really work well for you, you're much more likely to get results because if you just go out there and talk about the product or general things around the product, you're not helping people. You're helping the product. 
product. So yeah. how do you end up helping a person? You find out what the pain points of a person is. What does your cl potential client look like? Let's say it's like real estate or something. You think about that real estate agent or that finance person and think, okay, what is their pain point? How does this product help them? Okay, and then you make a video around that. Yeah. They're much more likely to search product to help real estate agent for this. And right. that's going to help you get found for your product, even if you could sell it to everybody else by niching down. I mean, I say that I, I have a niche audience of small businesses and entrepreneurs, but one that came out of the woodwork that I didn't even really see coming was YouTubers. People come to me because they're trying to figure out how to start a personal brand. Yeah. And I'm telling them, I'm showing them not only good quality, I'm showing them I'm having a lot of fun yeah. and I know my niche and I know how to make good videos and they're going to follow along and learn how to market themselves. Like it's, yeah. it's a win-win situation. So when I'm talking about how to create a thumbnail for your video, YouTubers are searching for that. Right. So they're going to come find me. Businesses want to know that too. And so do entrepreneurs, but YouTubers are definitely looking for that. So yeah. That's really what I would recommend is even it's, if you're also selling the same product, find out why you're different from them and yep. totally play that up. And that's, I think that's more than beyond powerful, beyond video, beyond anything else, because For so sure. often people say, you know, network marketing, it's all about duplication. And to some degree it is. I mean, when you're duplicating the success of a billionaire entrepreneur, Richard Branson, Elon Musk, whatever it may be, whoever it may be, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can duplicate what they did in terms of their thought process of how they created their business. But so many people forget like, Oh wait, I just joined this business. I have a personality. I, I should still use that. And it's yeah. however they do it, video writing, just talking, networking doesn't matter, but say, you know, combine the two, the personality and the product and or opportunity. And that's, I'm going to probably link directly to that part of the interview and just like blast it out. Like everybody needs to hear what Amy has to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's Perfect. that's awesome. So what what have you helped people to do in that, like getting started? I mean, all all YouTubers and, and small businesses creating content or have you like what's the weirdest situation where you didn't expect that you'd be able to help someone and then you kind of got involved and just figured it out? Um, I don't ever I don't think anything's ever like weird because the thing is, like this industry is so still very new that yeah. everything's weird. So I don't I don't know. If, I don't know if there's anything like crazy but I feel like the first steps for everyone is looking at like what is your editorial calendar and understanding how that's going to be mapped out is really really important for you to be able to get started because by far the most important thing that I can teach you is that if you're going to do this you got to keep doing it yeah. and that's why video blogging is such a great opportunity because video production is so much more high scale if you start allocating major funds for something like that you're going to go into it like it's commercial you're certainly not going to go into it like it's video content yep. and so that's really my biggest thing. So outlining the editorial calendar, but more important than that is the structure of that calendar because you guys can always say like, oh, my, my video comes out on Monday, guys, well, like whatever. Yeah. You're always looking at a blank slate every time and that people have a really hard time with that. So looking at how we can categorize each day of the week or each month, you know, each month or each day or each week of each month and looking yeah. at how we can cover different areas throughout and not drop the ball on what we're going to talk about and feel like we're repeating ourselves. Being able to to actually diagram that out is by far the the biggest thing that we have to do yeah. before we can even pick up a camera. That's because awesome. Otherwise, it's so outrageous that we would just go start vlogging and be like, "Oh, yeah. let's make let's see if it sticks." You know, you really, really, really have to be conscious of the context of your yeah. content and how it's actually going to work for you and how you're going yeah. to get paid back for that. Yeah. Because we're giving so much by making video. It's so much harder than writing a blog post. I don't care what any writer says. <laughs> like, I'm basically writing a blog post yeah. and making a video for every single one. Right. So it's it's so it's so much, but you really have to make sure you understand how you're getting return yep. before you can get started. Yeah. And, and at NMX, I mean, speaking to kind of like that investment, um, I, I, it was, everyone was like, oh, do you have a podcast? And I was like, oh, yeah, we do. And they're like, oh, you know, what microphone do you use? And then it'd come out that it was a video podcast. Like, oh, you have a video podcast. That's got to be really difficult. And, you know, because you're, you're dealing with two different mediums. You've got video yeah. and audio and, you know, you've got video equipment. You have to make sure that you have pants on and, you know, so on and so forth. And maybe. It, it, yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> I mean, in none of my interviews, anyone ever sees a little list. Um, I do have pants on. Uh, okay, and so, <laughs> um, you know, the other thing that you struck a huge chord on is uh, that editorial calendar. And from a vlogging standpoint, it's called an editorial calendar. From a network marketing standpoint, it's, you know, like a plan of action or a guide mm -hmm. or 
whatever you want to call it, but you have to strategize and say, this is what I'm going to do and this is when I'm going to do it. Because at any job, that's what you do. This is this is what we're doing this week. This is what we're doing this month. This is what we're doing this year. And you, you follow that. And it doesn't necessarily matter if you are really awesome at it the first time, but you keep going and you learn um, and you build amazing things. And I think a lot of people who get started kind of they look at where, you know, they see you in front of the camera and they're like, oh my gosh, she's having so much fun. She's traveling, she's going to all these conferences, but they don't see the hours of hard work behind it and the investment into video equipment and so on and so forth. And I think um, the other chord that you struck, which I loved, which uh, to start a network marketing business, I don't know, 200 to $500 maybe. And it's, you know, great because anyone can get into it, but it's also not great mm-hmm. because no one has that vested interest of, I just spent all this money and I'm going to continue spending all this money. I need to make it work. Right. So did right. you did you do that from the onset? I mean, because you said that you didn't get a DSLR until later down the road. Well, here's the thing. I mean, there's there's like this fine line of making the investment so you'll do it and yep. and also making sure you get started. And I will say yeah. at the very beginning, I, it wasn't until two years in that I made major changes to the channel. <laughs> so at two years, I had 100 videos. And I think it was like 55,000 views. I've done this presentation awesome. so many times that so I can actually probably remember the numbers. <laughs> it's, it's 100 videos, 55,000 views. And that's cool. Like that about shakes out to one video a week, yeah. but it was nowhere near that consistent. Yeah. So by not having the equipment, I really was not that no- usual um, yeah. with my content. And what I realized, it wasn't about jumping on the camera when I realized it, but it was more that if I knew what my sweet spot was, if I knew yep. how to execute a really good calendar and it made sense for my schedule, yep. then I would stick with it. And after that, yeah, after that video, that's when we started the three day a week schedule. I basically came home from yeah. CES after I talked to all my YouTube friends and I was like, they have some sort of system going here that works for them. So maybe I need to come up with my system. Yeah. So that was when that schedule started. And, you know, I had another hundred videos within eight months and I had gone up to 188,000 views. It was completely awesome. crazy, you know, and I, it was like a, from a thousand subscribers to the 4,800. Yeah. Wow. So it was an insane amount of growth in that amount of time, which is yeah. awesome, but it just spoke so much to how important the editorial yeah. calendar is. And that's the point where I was like, all right, this is a thing. We need a better yeah. camera, you know? <laughs> so, so I think it's really important to make that investment, but you also need to know with video that you're actually going to stick with it. You need to know exactly yeah. what you're, what you're going to be able to execute. You have to start executing to figure it out. And yeah. then you just, it always gets better. It always gets better. So once yeah. you're like, this is working, I haven't missed an episode in six months. We need a new camera. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Need a microphone. Need this, need that. That's when it starts to make more sense because your face is out there so much. It might as well be good quality. Right. Yeah. And, and, and high, high res. Like, yeah. I've seen your face on YouTube. It's high res. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think uh, I wear a lot more makeup now. We can put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a tax write off. Yeah. Uh, and I think my, my grandmother gave me some really phenomenal advice kind of on that same vein. Uh, years and years ago, I had a girlfriend and uh, it was like her first birthday when we were together. And I was like, was really, I forget even what it was, but it was this extravagant birthday present. And my, I told my grandmother and she's like, you gotta be careful. Because next year, you're going to have to step it up a notch and you have to keep getting better. And so many people get trapped. I always tell them that story. They get yeah. trapped in that perfectionism and they're like, oh, I got to buy this you know, $1,800 camera and this $2,000 lens and this microphone. And, and then I'm like, OK, what's your second video going to be? Are you going to have to spend $50,000 on your second yeah, video right. to make it that much right. better? Um, so it's a powerful lesson for people. And, and um, I think I guess destroying those fears is the best way I can phrase it um, and, and just showing like, look, I mean, that's how you are. You cut to the chase and you say, look you can do it. Um, mm-hmm. So in that is our, our kind of final question is what is some something that someone can do? They don't have a video series. Maybe they don't even want to make a video series, but they need to find out exactly where they're going and then take that first step. How do you, um, I guess, help them brainstorm that? Uh, well, funny you should say that. I think my channel does a lot of help no. uh, with that. There's actually a playlist on there that's Beginner's Guide to Vlogging, so you can that's start awesome. to educate yourself That will yourself be linked below. Yeah, so... <laughs> The other cool thing is that because it's April, it's a very fun time of the year on YouTube. It's vlog every day in April. So what we do at Savvy Sexy Social is get everybody excited about vlogging by saying, hey, 
We're all going to vlog every day. I mean, a lot yeah. of people miss days and it's totally fine. Yeah. It's about getting comfortable talking to a camera yeah. when you're kind of doing it with a group of people who are all kind of like coming out of their box and like yep. using their camera more and learning how to talk to people, growing an audience. It's so much easier for you to experiment for yourself. Yeah. And it's so much better doing it this way than having your first video ever be something that's crucial for your brand. Absolutely. And that's really, really unfortunate when people wait to do that. The only reason yeah. why I was able to start Savvy Sexy Soul was because I had the Schmatastic channel before that and I was just totally versed in talking to a camera. Right. I haven't seen the lens of a camera in a long time. When I'm looking at one, I'm picturing a person. Right. It's just how I operate now, but it takes time to get to that point. So vlogging every day in April, we also do it in August. If you are like, whoa, now, I don't know if I want to do <laughs> I that. I wait a few months um, for that. Yeah, if you want to wait a couple months to plan, <laughs> we'll plan. We'll do it again in August, but yeah. it's so fun. Everybody signs up on the website. The list is where it cut back or cut okay. out. Okay. God damn. I don't think I have... And we only have to I don't even do think I was close out. I don't even think I was hardline the whole time. I was still trying to I have no idea how we've been doing this. It's not even possible. Like it's physically impossible. Okay. <laughs> So people are going to the website and they are signing up. Everybody's list, everybody's on the list is totally public. Your name, your channel, your Twitter handle, everything is there. So we can all kind of hang out on the hashtag SSSVEDA. And when we publish videos, then we're all watching them and supporting each other, commenting with each other, subscribing. And it's making it so much more fun for people to actually try video because there's actually an audience sort of built in because everybody's doing this together. Yeah. So it's definitely a really, really good way to get started with video is just to kind of jump into a group like that. Yeah, that's awesome. And doing, you know, power in numbers and people, it's entirely less frightening when you have a bunch of people who are all frightened together. Um, Definitely. But kind of moving as that mass. Well, thank you so much. And I'm going to have links to everything that you talked about below. Um, and the Catalyst community knows that they will see all of that content um, and definitely your music video reviewing Gary's book and <laughs> some, some other fun things. Um, but thank you so much for coming on. And I uh, look forward to having you on again soon. Thank you so much for having me, Brian.